Hey everyone, it's T and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a manga called Chino Wadachi, aka A Trail of Blood. I've also seen it translated as a Blood on the Tracks, so whichever one floats your boat. This is a suspense slash horror slash psychological horror manga written by Shuzo Oshimi. You may know him from other manga such as the flowers of evil and happiness. So this review is going to have some spoilers. I'll try to keep it light as possible just so you have a little warning there. Basically the manga focuses on the relationship and dynamic between mother and son Seiko and Seiichi Osabe. Seiko is considered overprotective and doting of Seiichi often keeping him by her side, kind of babying him and spoiling him in a lot of ways. The thing that kicks off the events of the manga is the family being Seiko, Seiichi, his father, of course his grandparents, his aunt, uncle, and his cousin Shigeru. They all go on this hiking trip together. During the course of the trip, Seiichi almost falls off a cliff, but Seiko saves him and the family all kind of like laughs like, ha ha ha, Seiko, you're so overprotective, ha 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 ha, even though like her son almost fell off a fucking cliff, like no one was concerned, they just laughed it off. But the trip kind of continues and at some point Shigeru and Seiichi wander off and Shigeru's fucking around towards the edge of a cliff trying to get Seiichi to come forward and fuck around with him but he's like nah bro I'm not like doing that you're, you're fucking crazy like come back but he doesn't so he's still fucking around and Seiko finds them and she tells Shigeru move the fuck away from the cliff so he basically tells her like you're stupid I'm not doing that and he almost falls and Seiko catches him after a moment you can see the terror in Shigeru's face as she just smiles and lets go of him, lets him fall off the cliff. And that kicks off the rest of the events in the manga. The manga isn't really like in your face with the horror and stuff like that. It's more of a muted horror. So it really focuses on the psychological aspects of horror and suspense rather than relying on lots of jump scares or blood and gore, shocking things like that. Instead, it's solely psychological, really, like a muted kind of horror where you don't know what's going to happen moment to moment, particularly with Seiko. The manga does a really good job at exploring the dynamics of family dysfunction like how loyal are you supposed to be to a relative especially someone like you know your mother when they do something unspeakable like do you speak up do you keep it secret and you know how long do you keep that up for like if you keep it secret like how long do you stay quiet about it and if you do speak up what's going to happen to that family member what's going to happen to you and your relationship will anyone believe you loyalty particularly among family members is a big kind of theme there the relationship between Seiko and Seiichi also turns somewhat abusive and manipulative at every turn, Seiko seems to try to gaslight Seiichi or manipulate him into doing what she wants or behaving in a certain way. This kind of brings into question Seiko's true feelings towards her son. Like, does she really love him? Is she overprotective of him because of that? Or is she overprotective of him because she sees him as someone she can manipulate or control to treat as a doll or a toy to do her bidding and act as entertainment or a distraction for her and it also begs the question do we really know someone is it possible for us to really know our lovers our family our friends deep down do we actually know who they are and what they're capable of as much as we think we would 
So these are all some interesting dynamics the manga explores and they do some pretty interesting stuff exploring this concept. I really like the art in the manga. It's masterfully done, especially the way the faces are drawn. The faces are so expressive that you don't even really need the characters to say what they're feeling or thinking. You can just kind of see it written on their on their faces there. The story is a bit of a slow burn though, so if that's something that kind of bothers you or you don't like, then you may want to skip it, but if you stick with it, it is pretty enjoyable. The only real aspects of the manga that I don't really enjoy are kind of the last few chapters, to be honest. They seem rather anticlimactic. There are nine volumes that are going to be released. Um, two have been officially released in English. We've got two more coming for English translations. One November 3rd, I believe, and then the other January 12th of 2021. But everything's been serialized in Japan, so there's nine total volumes. Uh, hopefully the full thing will be out in English by the end of next year. They are churning them out pretty quick, it seems, with the official release translations. But the last few chapters that have been translated, meh, not that they're bad, but in some parts of the manga, like I said, especially the last few in general, they've seem kind of anticlimactic, kind of not really going anywhere in particular. Like they are building up character and stuff. But as far as like moving the plot along, it's not really moving the plot along. And as I said, gotten to a somewhat anti anticlimactic resolution to the, the current arc, I would say. So that's one of the drawbacks for me. The other thing I would kind of take as a negative is Seiichi's father. He just doesn't seem super believable. I mean, the, the characters of them, themselves in general aren't like, especially the side ones, super believable. You do have to kind of suspend your disbelief for some things, but with the father, I kind of feel like you really, really have to suspend your disbelief because there are certain instances where it's like, why aren't you stepping up? For example, there's one section in the manga where Seiko and Seiichi are laying in bed together with um, scraps of a note around them. It all seems really like weird and intimate and the dad, I believe, walks in on it and he don't do shit. <laughs> like he don't say nothing to his wife. He doesn't say anything to his son. He's just kind of like, what's going on in here? And that's kind of that. He doesn't really do anything to address it. He also seems pretty hands off in raising Seiichi. Like, yeah, he's there, but he doesn't really seem to make any decisions as far as the family goes. And it just seems unbelievable that he didn't notice anything weird happening with his wife or with his son. And, you know, maybe if he did, he just kind of ignored it and we haven't really gotten to explore that yet. Maybe it'll be explored later but for right now like the character of Seiichi's dad is just very frustrating and very hard to believe that this man would just sit by and do nothing while his son is pretty much being abused so that's pretty much my main issues with the manga but overall I do think it's really good and definitely worth the read like I said, it is a bit of a slow burn, but it definitely pays off in the end and the themes that the man manga explores are definitely worth checking out and it gives you something to think about. So yeah, that's my review there for Chino Wadachi. Let me know if you have checked out the manga already, if you like it, dislike it, if there's any other manga you would like me to review please feel free to let me know down in the comments below if it seems something that I'd be interested in. Be happy to review it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.